Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. I want to welcome you to this beautiful day that the Lord has made. The day, 16th December, 2019. And we'll be looking, by the grace of God, sin and the child of God. Let us pray. Eternal rock of ages, the I am that I am, the unchangeable changer. There is no one to be compared unto you because in you we live and move and have our being. Thank you, Lord, for another grace to see another day. Lord, we pray that as we look into your word, you will speak to us in the language we all understand, that after all said and done, your name alone will be glorified. We, your children, shall be blessed. And indeed, we will go out today to be your sons and daughters, even as we reject sin. Thank you because we know it is done, because we pray with faith and thanksgiving. In Jesus' name. First John chapter 3. I will read from verse 1 to 9. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Behold, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure, whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Lead to children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we are looking at the theme, sin and the child of God. If there's anything that should bother us in this life we are here today, is the issue of sin and the child of God. There's no doubt by right we are supposed to be children of God. But unfortunately, many of us, for one reason or, or the other, we've lost it just because of our sinfulness. One thing the devil does is to cause us to sin so that God can renounce us as his children. But thanks be to God, who sent Jesus Christ to come. And when we look at what John said here, he said, the Son of God manifests to destroy the works of the devil. All you need to, first of all, ask yourself, am I a child of God? And the only way you can answer that question is to look at your way of life, your character, your behavior, your attitude, 
that will show clearly whether you are a child of God or not. Again, it will show whether you are living in sin or not. One thing we must get clear here is that you cannot call yourself to be a child of God and continue to sin. What must we do? Thank God. Jesus came to this world to help us, to deliver us from the bondage of sin because his desire is that all of us will be children of God. Again, we must know that this God loved us so much. He loved us to the extent that he sent his only begotten son to come and pay the ransom for our sin. But unfortunately, many people till today still take that for granted that Jesus has died. He has paid the price. Therefore, we can live the way we like. That is far from the truth. If our desire is to be children of God, we must get rid of sin. Let's look at what was written down for us. Sin is lawlessness. The truth about life, just as it was said in 1 John 3 verse 4, whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Whatever we do that is contrary to the will of God, we become a sinner. And the problem today is this. Many a times, knowingly or unknowingly, by omission or by commission, what we do is to sin. And anyone that committed sin, the Bible made it clear to us, he has transgressed. So we must be careful. Transgression of God's will, either by omitting to do what God's law requires, or by doing what it forbids. That's why I said we need to look at ourselves, our behavior and our character, to ascertain whether indeed we are children of God or not. And here we have been told, you need to ask yourself, am I doing God's will? Or am I doing what God required of me. Sometimes we deceive ourselves, thinking we are deceiving God. We can claim to be doing God's will, but we know that indeed we are not doing His will. There is perfect will of God. There is permissive will of God. So anyone that does not do the will of God, that person is a transgressor. So are we doing or omitting what God requires of us, we need to ask ourselves. And now we are told here, transgression can occur in thought. The way we think, Jesus made it clear to us when he was talking about the issue of adultery of fornication, that if a man looks at a woman lustfully, that person has committed sin. You need to guide your thought. If your desire is to be a child of God, what do you think in your mind? One thing we must know clearly, which is biblical, is that whatever we do comes from what we think. For you to commit any sin, whether adultery, whether to commit murder, whether to steal, you must first of all think it in your mind. So we must guide our thoughts if our desire is to be child of God. So ask yourself, are you committing any sin in thought? What are the things you think? Do you think evil things or good things? Remember, there is nothing we do that does not come from what we think. So in thought, that's what verse 15 made it clear to us. In this same, same first John, ask yourself, in what? Many people, because of the type of life we live, we commit sin in word. And that is why we have to be very, very careful what we say, what comes out of our mouth. Many people, they can kill. That's why James says, if anyone does not commit sin through what he says, that person will be perfect. So if we want to be child of God and want to get rid of sin, we must control our tongue. We must control what we say. We must be careful what we say because any sin committed in thought or word shows that we are not ease. And the third one is, 
commission, committing sin through what we do. Indeed. Many a times we do not know that some things we do can backfire. Ask yourself, what are the things you do? Does it bring glory to God? Is it to hurt humankind? Is it to bless humankind? We must be careful. Mankind was created without sin, morally upright, and inclined to do well. The truth is that God created us, and when he created everything, he said he saw that all he created was good, perfect. But unfortunately, today, sin has taken over. The reason why we are suffering today is because of our sin. Whether as a nation, or as a church, or as a family, or as an individual, we must get rid of sin if our desire is to be a child of God. A child of God is someone who loves and fears God. That we are certain, whether you are a child of God or not, do you fear God? Anyone that fears God will do the will of God. And so when you don't fear God, then there is nothing you cannot do. The original nature of man is void of sin. But since after the fall of Adam, it has been a struggle for man to live right with God. Yes, it is difficult, but it is possible. So I want to challenge you as you are listening to me. Because this God loves you, he loves me. His desire for us is for us to be his children. Depends on what we do. Therefore, is it your desire to be a child of God? It is not automatic. There are things you must do. In John chapter 1, verse 12, he said those who believe in him, those that have received him, he gave them power to become children of God. If your desire is to be a child of God, then you need Jesus. The most painful aspect of it is that some so-called pastors who are living in sin are deceiving some ignorant people with the word. It does not matter. And God understands. What is it that you are thinking God understands? What do you mean by it? Is not, it doesn't matter. It matters a lot. Anyone who commits sin, God will not be pleased with that person. And that is why he sent his only begotten son to die to take away our sin. But we must be dead to sin. Paul told the Corinthians, see, can we continue in sin and think that the grace of God will continue? Child of God, you must stay away from sin no matter how little. No small sin. Any sin can lead to hell. And will lead to hell. All we must do is to confess our sins so that we can be sons and daughters of our God. To avoid staining that garment that has been washed by the blood of the Lamb, you must get rid of sin. You must forsake sin. You must abandon sin. No one can avoid sin by his or her own power except through the help of the Holy Spirit. If your desire is to live a righteous life, since your desire is to be a child of God, please allow the Spirit of God to control you. Let the Spirit of God take control of all you do, your word, your thoughts, and your deed. That will enable you to become a child of God. Remember, he loves you, he loves me. He's not interested that anyone should go to hell. That is why the Bible made it clear to us in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. He said, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone will open, I will come in and I will wait to him. Remember, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 had made it clear to us. Today is the day of salvation. Is it your desire to be a child of God? Don't wait. Do not allow the devil to hinder you. He has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Do not allow him. All you just need to do, accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. When that is done, the Holy Spirit will take it over and he will help you. And we can only have the Spirit by accepting Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. Where are you? Have you accepted him? Jesus is calling you. Say, come and let us reason together. That is the warning of God to you. If you accept him, he will come and dwell in you, and you will be his child forever. Therefore, I challenge you, as you are listening to me this morning, 
accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior so that you can become a child of God. And so finally, when you become, you will be candidate of heaven. Don't jeopardize your future. Don't destroy your heavenly home through your earthly life. Accept Jesus for sex sin. Be a child of God. Let us pray. Say this prayer after me. Lord, may I never see anything as small. Rather give me the grace to live above sin. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Father, we thank you for your word that has gone forth. Give us grace to live in conformity with your word so that finally we will make heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening. God bless you. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. 